everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Josephine and on this channel we talk about all things fragranced. Today's video is a buying guide video on the brand Byredo. A lot of you has asked me questions on Byredo, which fragrances to get, so I thought I would do a very simple buying guide. I've done a previous video on a full house review of Byredo, so I'll link it down below if you're interested in that. But here I've done very clear categories for you to understand which fragrances could be right for you and for which occasion. So if you're interested in knowing a bit more about Byredo and what fragrances to get from the brand, then please keep watching. All right, so I thought I'd begin with a very quick introduction into the brand. So Byredo is a Swedish niche fragrance brand that creates fragrances, but they also do some body products, candles, and I believe leather goods as well, so like accessories. The whole idea around the brand is this sort of Scandi minimalism. So it's quite minimalistic, it's very cool and edgy, without trying too hard. I think the fragrances in general from Byredo are very easy to understand, they're very approachable, but the fragrances that you'll find are quite unique. So there's always a combination of ingredients in here that give the fragrances a little twist and make them interesting enough, but yet very easy to wear. Now let's get on to the buying guide. So the way that I've created this guide is that we have fragrances for different occasions. I've separated out in different categories. You will see that for each category, there's at least one or two fragrances. So the first category is the signature scent. Which fragrance is the most versatile? Which one works in any occasion, all throughout the year, day and night, anytime basically? So I have two fragrances under the signature scent category. The first one is Gypsy Water. This may not be a big surprise because it is one of the best sellers from the brand and it is definitely a fragrance that is super easy to wear. Gypsy Water is a very clean, invigorating type of scent that has sort of a calming feel as well. This scent is really inoffensive, it's very casual, it can be worn to go out to run errands, it can be worn in the weekend, it can be worn in an office type of environment, it can be worn during the day, even during the night. So this is a very easy going type of fragrance. I didn't talk about it in my previous Byredo House review because I didn't have it and to be fair, the last time that I smelt this scent was many years ago and I wasn't wasn't very impressed by it because it is quite simplistic, but I ordered a sample to do this buying guide and I actually fell in love with this fragrance and I ordered a bottle of it. So I think it's a great scent and one that I very much enjoy wearing. It sits closer to the skin. The longevity isn't amazing on this. It's around four hours, which is a bit of a disappointment, but I don't mind reapplying it throughout the day because I think it is just a lovely fragrance. This is more of a subtle scent, but people will definitely ask you what you're wearing because you smell really good. And I would say that Gypsy Water is definitely a unisex scent, although perhaps leaning more towards a little bit feminine. The second fragrance within the signature scent category is one that I've loved for many years. I've talked about it so, so much on this channel. It is Belle d'Afrique. This fragrance is a gorgeous vetiver scent. It's really warm. It's radiant. It's super comforting. I personally enjoy wearing it more in the winter time. However, I think that this would work great all year round. And the reason being is that it has a solar element to this fragrance. So it has African marigold and also jasmine, and it has a bit of this balmy feel, kind of like a summery feel, but at the same time it has these woods that are very enveloping and comforting, which brings more structure and grounds the fragrance, which is why it works so well in the winter time as well. To me, this fragrance really brings a warm, fuzzy feeling, and this is definitely a scent that I gravitate towards if I want something that is a bit more enveloping and sort of a happy scent. Yeah, this is a very comforting, warm, happy scent to me. The projection on this is also wonderful. So this is probably one of the better performing Byredo fragrances. I get at least seven hours of wear from this. And also the projection or sillage is amazing on the scent and it will give you a ton of compliments. I don't know a person who doesn't like the scent. Every time I've worn it, I've gotten compliments from both men and women. And some people even went out to buy this fragrance because they loved it so much when I wore it. I would say this is a really great one to grab for. And if I would recommend only one scent to get from Byredo, just one, Belle d'Afrique would be it. The next category is daytime scents. And within the daytime scents, I've separated them out into your sort of casual daytime and your office type of perfume. So within the casual subcategory of daytime scents, I have two fragrances. The first one 
is the Unnamed. So this is the Byredo bottle, which doesn't have a name. And this perfume to me is entirely unisex and is really the very definition of unisex fragrances. It has notes of gin, pink pepper, there's violet, there's orris, oak moss and fur balsam. The scent itself is very clean, it feels fresh. I get more of a violet, sort of orris root type of feel and it's also a little bit musky to my nose. I also get a little bit of fruitiness in here that is reminiscent of the flesh of fig. Even though fig isn't mentioned in the ingredients, this is the type of fruit that it reminds me of. This fragrance is very linear, it's not crazy complicated, so it's very easy to understand, but it smells really good, it does the job. I think this is the type of scent that you wanna throw on when you get out of the shower, you wanna smell really clean and fresh and out the door. This fragrance has an incredible tenacity, so it will last on your skin, at least on mine, it lasted minimum seven hours, and also it projects quite strongly. So this is another better performing scent from Byredo. The second fragrance is Rose of No Man's Land. This perfume is a fresh, dewy rose type of scent. It's a little bit musky. So there's rose in here, there's raspberry, there's pink pepper, papyrus. To me, this fragrance is a really easygoing, rosy scent. If you don't like rose fragrances, but you do want to try a rose scent, I think Rose of No Man's Land is really great because it's really inoffensive. It smells very fresh. It's slightly floral and just works really well. I would say probably on everyone's skin because it's quite clean, transparent, light and airy. This is a very airy fragrance. There's definitely a romantic soft side to this perfume for some reason. It makes me think of a bubble bath with rose petaled scattered on top of the surface of the bath. And the dry down on this perfume is a bit more musky as I mentioned. It reminds me a little bit of Edition Véronique by Mise en Cire. However, it differs in the sense that it feels a little bit more gritty. There's something in the background of this fragrance I wouldn't say is earthy, but there's a bit of grit to it. So I think this is great to throw on for the daytime. So that was Rose of No Man's Land. I have one fragrance for the office. This is Mojave Ghost. I think this scent is really great because it's more of a skin type of scent. It's a bit woody, it's musky with a touch of fruitiness. And I think it would work really well with this crisp white shirt. So this perfume to me, smells really nice, it's really whimsical. And the fruitiness in here is sort of like a pear-like fruitiness. So it's a bit green, it's a little bit juicy, and overall it just glides on your skin. This perfume reminds me of Elevator Music, also by Byredo, which was a limited edition that was done with Virgil Abloh, which I own, which is in the back here. But if you like, for example, Gypsy Water, then I would say that you would really enjoy Mojave Ghost because it's on the similar lines, it's very casual and easy to wear, and really not offensive. Again, this is a very linear fragrance. It's not going to change drastically as you wear it throughout the day. So in that sense, whatever you smell at first will be whatever you smell a couple of hours later. So that was Mojave Ghost. Now on to the nighttime scents. And here again, I did two little categories. The first one is your night outs, maybe clubbing type of scent. And the other fragrance is more of an intimate date night type of scent. So for the going out scent, I have Black Saffron. This perfume is a gorgeous, leathery, sweet raspberry saffron type of fragrance. It's very addictive. It feels very sexy and very alluring. This is also very unisex. I think this works equally as well on men as it does on women. I would say this is definitely more of a refined clubbing scent. It's not too loud or not too sweet. It smells a little bit naughty actually. It's magnetic and quite intoxicating as well. If you like Tuscan Leather by Tom Ford, then you'll probably enjoy Black saffron as well. Then we have the date night fragrances and the difference between the date night and the clubbing scents is that date night they're more intimate. I find that they're more sensual as well. The first one is one of my favorites as well from Byredo. It is Velvet Haze. This is a very unique type of fragrance that is centered around earthy patchouli and creamy coconut. Overall you get sort of a haze because you're a bit confused as to what you're smelling. It's really mysterious, it's dark, again it's very alluring. This is velvety and plush and it's perfect for more of an intimate type of environment. If you like Narciso Rodriguez for her, it's similar to that in the sense that it has that overall like sort of chypre character but 
because of this coconut water and the patchouli here is enhanced, it is different. I would say this fragrance is unisex, but leaning more towards feminine and it feels very confident. This is the scent of someone who's very confident or who wants to feel very confident. So that was Velvet Haze. The next fragrance is more on the playful side, one that unfortunately doesn't work on my skin, but I think it is still worth mentioning. It is Slow Dance. This fragrance is an ambery fragrance that is very nuanced and multifaceted and definitely has that hint of playfulness. The notes in here are opopanax, labdanum, violet leaves, geranium, patchouli, and vanilla. So when you first spray this fragrance, you get a very pronounced ambery type of powderiness with a pop of greenness and sweetness. It reminds me a little bit for some reason, I don't know why, of strawberry bubblegum with amber, <laughs> if that's a visual representation of what this perfume can smell like. And as it continues to develop, so this greenness comes from the geranium, it's almost like you take some green leaves from the geranium and just rub them against your fingers. That is the type of greenness that I get from the scent. And to me, this fragrance feels quite vintagey as well. As it continues to dry down, I almost get a bit of a Play-Doh feel. So it's an interesting scent, it's very faceted, and it definitely has an element of fun, but it is great for date night because it has that sweetness from vanilla and from the amber. So it really warms to your skin and gives it more of that intimate feel. And the two final categories are categories I split by season. So we have your summer fragrances and your winter fragrances. So for the summer category, I have two fragrances and the first one is probably the ultimate summer scent. It is Sun Days. This is your bright, happy and cheerful citrus fragrance. So when you spray this fragrance, you really get that burst of citrus with mandarin, with lemon, with orange that is entangled in the sweetness and airiness of cotton candy. It's really youthful, it's fun, and it's definitely a twist on your classic type of fresh citrus scent for the summertime. Sundays is a really pretty scent. It's packed with sunshine and it will make you smile. This is the type of scent that you wanna wear when you wanna feel happy and cheerful and wanna have a great day. And I think that the cotton candy Candy in this fragrance really helps lift the citrus and makes it more long-lasting as well. The projection on this fragrance is really good too, so it's really a win-win type of situation. I will say though that it goes sweeter on the dry down, and so perhaps this is more of a feminine type of fragrance versus masculine, even though it's classified as unisex, if that makes sense. So that was Sundays. The second summer fragrance is Flower Head, which is your grand floral type of summery scent. There's jasmine in here, there's tuberose, there's lemon, lingonberry, amber, and suede. So the floral in here is really full-bodied, but it's very bright and happy. So the jasmine and the tuberose here, the element that is highlighted in this fragrance is the transparent, the clean, the fresh side of the flowers, rather than the fecal or animalistic side that probably make it a bit more sensual. So this fragrance feels very fresh and clean and happy. This is a great perfume to wear during the day and during the night in the summer. I think it works for both occasions and I would say this is more on the feminine side. So that was Flower Head. And finally, we have the winter fragrances category. The first perfume that I have for this category is Pulp, which is another favorite of mine. This is a fruity scent that is done in a way that is really intriguing. I've described this fragrance in the past as it being almost extraterrestrial. It's a very unique and complex fruity scent that focuses around fig and rhubarb. So this perfume, to me, I love to wear it during the autumn time specifically. The notes in here are bergamot, black currant, there's fig, cardamom, red apple, tiare, cedarwood, peach flower, and praline. It manages to be green, so unripe fruits, but also overly ripe fruit at the same time. I would say this is more on the polarizing end out of all the fragrances that I talked about, so I would definitely, definitely test it before you purchase it. This is another one with a great projection. People will definitely be able to smell you if you're walking down the streets. So if you like fruity fragrances with fig and rhubarb, then I would recommend you try out Pulp. The second fragrance I would recommend for winter is 11th Hour. This is a boozy, spicy, woodsy, pine-like type of fragrance. It is very, very spicy and to me it reminds me of the Christmas time because it has sort of a mulled wine effect that is really warm, comforting, and festive. The notes in here are bergamot, Sichuan pepper, 
pepper, fig, carrot seeds, rum, cashew wood, and tonka beans. When you first spray this fragrance, you definitely get an eruption of spices. It is really, really spicy, but then the spices will tone down, leaving place to almost like a fermented fig type of scent. So it's a little bit boozy. And actually it reminds me of the fruits that you would put in alcohol in jars and then leave them ferment for many, many months and then eat them during Christmas time, for example. So this is a wonderful scent to wear during this festive season and I think a very fitting scent for the winter time. And the final fragrance of this video and within the winter category is Oud Immortel. This perfume is a very fresh Oudi scent. Interesting, it has sort of an Aventus type of DNA where you get a fresh fruitiness that is reminiscent of pineapple even though there's no pineapple in here, but it has a lot of supporting woods and of course oud in this perfume. It's interesting because this fragrance I find is quite uplifting but at the same time it's very smoky, dark and mysterious. I get a lot of oak moss in here, tobacco and patchouli and of course the oud. So this is a very woody type of scent with that hint of fruitiness. This is also a smooth oud so perhaps if you're not really into oud fragrances I think this is a great one to reach out for because it is a very approachable oud. You're not going to get that fecal element from the oud coming through. It's made really fresh and it's very easy to wear. So that was the last fragrance in the Baredo buying guide. I hope you found this video useful. Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite Baredo fragrance. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you very soon in a new video. Bye!